Welcome back to Make Writing Visible. I have a stack of books because today we are talking about what would go on this line. If you were writing a story, what would go on that line? The title. And then you'd have who it's by. So I want to talk about titles today. And as always, if you're going to learn to do something better as a writer, I want you to back up and do it as a reader first. So that's why you need the stacks of picture books to look at titles that other authors have used and think, hmm, were those good choices for titles? Why or why not? I have a series of books in my Mrs. Shepherd's uh, stories, and they're all about a different school day. So this one's school picture day. You know, know which special day it is. Book fair day, when they're having a book fair at their school, or field trip day, when they go on a field trip. So those titles serve a purpose because they let you know what the stories are about. Sometimes stories can serve a dual or double purpose. In my book, Wild Child, the wild child is the season of autumn. She does not want to go to bed. She comes up with excuses so she can stay up later and Mother Earth won't put her to bed. Well, she's a wild child because she's a little wild. She doesn't want to go to bed. She keeps staying up and acting out a little bit. But also she's a wild child because she is out in nature. She is wild as in being out in nature. So this title serves a double purpose. Sometimes titles can be a little bit mysterious. In my book, The Dump Man's Treasures, we find out from the illustration on the cover that Mary Beth Owens did that this story takes place at a dump at a recycling center. Well, what are the treasures? There's lots of trash there, but what are the treasures? And when you get into the book, you find out the treasures for the dump man are books. He loves books more than anybody does in town. I wanted this title to be a little mysterious and not talk about the dump man's library. I wanted people to read to find out what the treasure is. And the book actually has a secret. You find out later the dump man doesn't know how to read. So it makes his treasures even that much more special. In this book, Lost Trail, Nine Days Alone in the Wilderness, and it actually says the true story. This is a nonfiction book that I'm the co-author of, and it's a graphic novel. Nonfiction titles have to serve a purpose. They have to let you know what the story is about. It's true. Lost Trail, somebody loses a trail when they're hiking. Nine Days Alone in the Wilderness, you find out that this boy in the story is lost for nine days in the wilderness. So that title has enough information. There's a bear, you'll know he runs into a bear, which the illustrations show, not the title. But there's enough information to pull the reader in to say, this is what it's about. And if you like a nonfiction story, survival story, that would interest you. Another example, A Camping Spree with Mr. McGee by Chris Van Dusen. And A Camping Spree with Mr. McGee Spree is an unusual word. You could say a camping trip, but spree is a word that sort of gets your attention. A spree is like a lively, frolic, noisy time. So you know that Mr. McGee is going to have quite a camping adventure. And since it's spree and McGee and they rhyme, it lets you know the story rhymes, and it does. In One Cool Friend by Tony Buzio and David Small, again, it's a title that serves a double purpose. Elliot befriends a penguin when he goes to an aquarium. He actually asks his dad if he can get a souvenir, and he takes home a real penguin. So it's One Cool Friend. Ooh, cool friend. Everybody would want a friend like this. It's so cool. But also cool because penguins need to be in a cold, a chilly environment. In Raina Telgemeier's graphic novel, Smile, this book has a simple title, Smile. But by the illustration, it lets you know this is going to be about somebody who has to have things done with their teeth. And a lot of the story has the main character. She falls, she breaks her teeth. She was going to have to have braces anyway. She's got all the headgear. So Smile is perfect because so much of the story is about what happens with her teeth. 
But it also serves a double purpose because in this story, she's at the age, she falls for this boy, but does he like her? She's going to a new school. What's the best group of friends at the school? So in the end, she learns to smile, even with all the braces and headgear. Also, she learns to smile in life because of the uh, different problems or situations she goes through. So Smile is a perfect title there. So find books as a reader, go through stacks, and talk about why do those titles work? Why don't they work? Could an author have had a better title? Why do you think they chose that title? And then after that, I think you're ready to start thinking more about titles for your own stories. Most young authors, when they write a story, they write the title on the top, and then they keep writing, and they have their byline. It's by them, just like I put by me. What I encourage young authors to do is don't worry about getting a title to start. Just draw a line on your piece of paper. It's sort of like a place marker. It holds the spot for your title. Then you can go ahead and write your story, and after you've written a story and you're pleased with a story, then go back and write a title that matches your story, that seems like the best choice. As you're writing, you might get ideas, and you can jot down title ideas in the margins or at the top of the paper. You can also talk with other young authors in your classroom and share a story and say, I'm thinking of these two or three titles. Which do you think would be the best? And see what they think. Another activity, this blog will have a handout for you to try some title activities, but one that I've done before is I brainstorm just titles. I haven't written the whole story, I've only thought of titles, and like with any kind of writing, it's sort of like exercise. If you practice writing titles, just titles, then you get better at writing titles. So that's the opposite of leaving it blank. Instead, you have a title with no story. And later, maybe you'll find a story for it. So some of the titles that I have, Drawer of Dreams. I like that title, Drawer of Dreams. I don't know what dreams are kept in a drawer. I'd have to figure that out, but I like the sound of the title. Snow Prisoner. Hmm. I don't know who a snow prisoner would be, but I like that. Mischief Mama. Kids can make mischief. But what about a mama who makes mischief? Toe jam sandwiches. Ooh, I don't know if I want to read a story with a title, Toe jam sandwiches. But that's the whole point. If it's a gross title, then you have to write a gross story to go with the gross title. When you write titles, one thing I want you to keep in mind is titles have to keep a promise. A title has to be a good match for a story. You wouldn't have a title with the word dolphins in it, and dolphins never appear in the story. So you have to make sure that, first of all, your title keeps a promise, even if it has an element of mystery, even if it tells some of the setting. You want it to keep that promise. So I challenge you to look at other authors' books and talk about why they came up with the titles they did. I want you to start exploring your own titles. Look at some of your stories. Would you go back to some other stories and change your titles? And I want you to think about just writing titles. Don't worry about the story. Do some creative brainstorming. Have fun making writing visible.